Beyond the Ring of Destiny, some believe that Valentino's films themselves carry a curse. Several productions he starred in were plagued by accidents and tragedies. For instance, during the filming of The Son of the Sheik, multiple crew members reported accidents and illnesses. For over 100 years, Hollywood has brought audiences more horror legends and paranormal thrills than most of us will ever watch. It's wholly ironic that perhaps the best legends out of Tinseltown are those that aren't filmed. Welcome to the mysterious world of Hollywood's paranormal mysteries and legends. Rudolph Valentino was the first idol on the silver screen. He's also the first celebrity to become so famous he was recognized by a single word. Valentino. His untimely death brought such devastation that several fans slayed themselves at his funeral. It also brought about countless stories related to hauntings and curses. Valentino was called the Latin lover and the greatest lover. His gaze was said to have a greater effect on women than any other man. This episode is dedicated to the man and the myth behind these legends. Women are not in love with me but with the picture of me on the screen. I am merely the canvas on which women paint their dreams. Rudolf Valentino. Rudolf Valentino, who was born Rodolfo Alfonso Raffaello Pierre Filibert Guglielmi di Valentina d'Antonguola in 1895, is an enduring icon of the silent film era. Valentino captivated audiences with his smoldering looks and magnetic screen presence. But beyond his cinematic legacy, Valentino's turbulent life and untimely death have spawned a myriad of paranormal legends and lore that continue to intrigue and mystify to this day. From haunted objects to ghostly apparitions, the tales surrounding Valentino are as enigmatic as the man himself. You've probably heard of the legendary Spear of Destiny, which legend says was held by Adolf Hitler in World War II. Valentino's tragic life and fate was rumored to be tied to a mysterious ring that brought sadness and devastation to anyone who owned it. Did Valentino own such a ring? We are only left with speculation. Here is the story behind the infamous Ring of Destiny. The legend, Valentino spotted a strange ring in a Hollywood pawn shop in 1920. It wasn't particularly beautiful. It was a simple tiger eye set in gold, but something about it caught his eye. He wore it during the filming of The Young Raja and the movie flopped. He put the ring away as he became involved in other projects and forgot about it for several years. Valentino came across the piece again and wore it while promoting Son of Sheik. A week later, he was hospitalized for bleeding ulcers and tragically died soon after. The ring then passed to his girlfriend, Pola Negri. Her health and career took a nosedive. Her career nearly ended as well as her life. She didn't connect the bad luck to the ring until she gave it away. She gave the ring to singer Russ Colombo, a singer who resembled Valentino. Her life improved afterward, but Colombo didn't get the chance. He soon died in an unsolved shooting accident. Right after this, infamous gangster Joe Casino then got the ring. Despite knowing its curse, he wore it and was hit by a truck within a week. His brother, Del Casino, inherited it next, but the ring was stolen. The thief was killed by the police during his escape. As time passed, the ring continued to have a negative influence on all those around. Eventually, it came to Jack Dunn for his audition to star in a role as Valentino. He died of a rare blood disease within a week. Newspapers claimed he died due to a burn from a cigarette ash. Now, the Ring of Destiny sits in a Hollywood bank vault, awaiting its next victim. An American may speak love with his lips. The Italian must say it with his eyes. Rudolf Valentino. It's an incredibly alluring story. But how much is fact and how much is fiction? That is far more difficult to discern. Valentino was born in 1895 to a French mother and Italian father. He eventually came from Italy to New York. In New York, he eventually found a job as a taxi dancer. These are essentially attractive dancers many clubs employed to work as dancing partners for the patrons. Sometimes club owners wanted a high standard of dancing on their floor. Taxi dancers also functioned as informal dancing instructors for patrons who needed help. Valentino caught the eye of New York socialite Blanca de Salle. It's implied they were lovers, though there's no evidence. Blanca, an older native of Chile, was married to John Sauls, a wealthy businessman. Their unhappy marriage led to a bitter divorce, where Valentino testified on Blanca's behalf. He believed her husband was unfaithful, and testified as much. 
Valentino's decision to help a friend had disastrous consequences. Sauls was enraged that his wife had someone testify on her behalf. He used his political influence to fabricate false charges against Valentino as well as another woman, suspected of being a madam. The scandal of the trial and the Trump charges were enough to get him ostracized from all he knew in New York. He couldn't find work afterward and none of his friends would speak to him. As far as it's known, Blanca didn't even thank him. Um, Rudolph Valentino was more than just a screen legend. He was a force of nature. His charisma was undeniable, drawing everyone into his orbit with an almost magnetic charm. On screen, he brought characters to life with a depth and passion that was breathtaking. Off screen, he was kind and humble with a warm smile that made you feel like the most important person in the room. Knowing him was a privilege and his impact on the world of cinema and on those who knew him personally will never be forgotten. Blanca de Sols. Valentino had enough of New York and the drama that had overtaken his life. He left the city with his grandfather and they traveled west to San Francisco. His luck wasn't a great deal better. He suffered a failed marriage that was never consummated. He then landed a role in the movie Camille. There he met director and costume designer Natasha Rambova. The two became a couple, but it seemed both remained unlucky. They married in 1923. He wanted children, but she didn't. Every movie they starred in together flopped. Eventually, Rambova had an affair with a cameraman. After the divorce, Valentino's behavior grew reckless. He engaged in risky love affairs and refused medical help for his ulcers. He nearly killed himself in several automobile accidents and when he became ill, he refused to see a doctor. Naturally, many men of his time strongly disliked the silent screen star. One journalist from the Chicago Tribune publicly labeled him a pink powder puff and declared he was responsible for the feminization of men nationwide. Since it was illegal to challenge the writer to a duel with weaponry, he settled for a boxing match. Valentino became so angry he challenged the journalist to a boxing match. The cowardly writer refused, but the paper sent someone they believed would be a worthy challenger. Valentino won the match, and he beat the other man while suffering with bleeding ulcers. It should be noted that boxing legend Jack Dempsey trained Valentino. Valentino was on tour for his film Son of Sheik when he collapsed. He was admitted to the hospital. Surgery was performed, and they said it was successful, but a few days later, Valentino succumbed to infection from the surgery. In New York, 80,000 women attended his funeral. In Los Angeles, several mourning fans slayed themselves. Valentino's ghost is still said to haunt many places he loved. Silent screen star Pola Negri shocked funeral attendees when she proclaimed they were engaged. Many assumed it was a publicity stunt because she didn't have any proof but the two were known to have been in a relationship for some time. Rudolf Valentino was a man of extraordinary talent and unparalleled presence. He had a deep, almost spiritual connection with his craft, transforming every role into a work of art. His dedication was inspiring, pushing the boundaries of cinema and leaving an indelible mark on the industry. Beyond his on-screen magnetism, Rudy was a complex, thoughtful soul with a passion for beauty in all its forms. To know him was to understand the true meaning of creativity and love. His legacy is not just in his films, but in the hearts of all who adored him. Natasha Rambova Pola Negri had a tragic life of her own, fleeing the Nazis and battling poor health. She claimed Valentino was the love of her life until her death. Blanca de Sol later fought with her husband over custody of their son. The fight turned violent and she shot him. Acquitted of his murder, Blanca's dramatic life mirrored the chaos Valentino faced. The curse didn't end with Valentino. The ring was passed to his girlfriend, Pola Negri, who experienced a dramatic decline in health and career. She gave the ring to singer Russ Colombo, who died in a mysterious shooting accident. The ring then made its way to gangster Joe Casino, who was hit by a truck shortly after acquiring it. Rudolph Valentino was the epitome of elegance and passion, both on and off the screen. His presence was electric, capturing the hearts of audiences around the world with an effortless grace that few could ever match. 
To act alongside him was to witness true artistry in motion. He brought a depth and intensity to his roles that made every scene unforgettable. Beyond the camera, Rudy was a dear friend, full of warmth, wit, and a genuine kindness that endeared him to all who knew him. His loss was deeply felt. The curse seemingly continued its deadly legacy through a series of unfortunate events, cementing the ring's reputation as a harbinger of doom. Russ Colombo's death was indeed accidental. A gun discharged, hitting him in the eye. Colombo was a singer, and he did die from a shooting accident in September of 1934. He was at a longtime friend's house, and the two were looking at the friend's gun collection. His friend accidentally shot the weapon, which ricocheted off a piece of furniture, and hit Columbo in the eye. Joe Casino, the alleged gangster, is less documented. Jack Dunn, a British Olympic ice skater, had just started a film career when he contracted a rare disease and died within two weeks. His mysterious death adds to the ring's eerie tale. Dunn is often referred to as the final victim. There is no record of him wearing the ring, but the British Olympic ice skater was just starting a career in film. He indeed had landed the role of Valentino in a movie about his life. He was hit with a mysterious blood disease and, within two weeks, was dead at 21. He was diagnosed with rabbit fever, or tularemia, a rare disease that goes from rodent to human. It can be fatal if untreated. Dunn died in July of 1938. The legend of Rudolph Valentino and the Ring of Destiny remains one of Hollywood's most fascinating tales. Whether fact or fiction, it continues to captivate. The legends of Valentino's ghostly presence are not confined to the past. Modern encounters with Valentino's spirit continue to be reported, keeping his legend alive in contemporary culture. In recent years, actors, filmmakers, and paranormal investigators have claimed to experience unexplained phenomena while researching or working on projects related to Valentino's life. These include sightings of a shadowy figure on film sets, mysterious cold spots, and the feeling of being watched. The question remains, why does Rudolph Valentino's spirit continue to captivate and haunt us? Some suggest that Valentino's sudden and untimely death left his spirit restless, causing him to wander between the world of the living and the dead. Others believe that his status as a cultural icon has imbued his memory with a certain power, perpetuating the legends and sightings long after his death. The women I love don't love me. The others don't matter. Rudolf Valentino. Another famous legend involves Valentino's beloved home, Falcon Lair. It was perched on a hill in Beverly Hills. This Spanish-style mansion was Valentino's sanctuary, and meant to be a wedding gift to Rambova. However, it is said that the star's spirit never left. After his death in 1926, numerous reports emerged of strange occurrences at Falcon Lair. Caretakers and subsequent owners have reported seeing Valentino's ghost wandering the halls, especially in his bedroom and the library. Some claim to hear phantom footsteps and a disembodied voice softly speaking in Italian. These ghostly encounters solidified Falcon Lair's reputation as one of Hollywood's most haunted houses. In addition to these eerie sightings, many visitors reported a sudden drop in temperature and an overwhelming sense of melancholy in certain rooms, particularly near Valentino's favorite spots. Even the mansion's iconic windows, once open to the sweeping views of Los Angeles, have been said to rattle inexplicably as if echoing the restless spirit of the screen legend. These stories have captivated fans and paranormal enthusiasts alike, drawing them to Falcon Lair in hopes of catching a glimpse of the ghostly Valentino who, it seems, never truly said goodbye to his cherished home. Most tragically, this famous mansion was razed in 2006. Beyond the Ring of Destiny, some believe that Valentino's films themselves carry a curse. Several productions he starred in were plagued by accidents and tragedies. For instance, during the filming of The Son of the Sheik, multiple crew members reported accidents and illnesses. Although this could be chalked up to the rigors of filmmaking, the pattern of misfortune has contributed to the legend of a curse surrounding Valentino's work. One of the most enduring legends associated with Valentino is the mysterious Lady in Black. According to the story, a veiled woman dressed entirely in black visits Valentino's crypt at Hollywood Forever Cemetery every year on the anniversary of his death. 
This tradition began shortly after Valentino's death in 1926 and has continued for decades. The identity of the Lady in Black has been the subject of much speculation. Some believe she was a devoted fan, while others think she might have been a former lover or a relative. Over the years, several women have claimed to be the original Lady in Black or have continued the tradition in her honor. This annual visit has become a part of Valentino's legend. Another eerie legend involves Valentino's car, a custom-built 1925 Isotta Fraschini Tipo 8A. This luxury vehicle, known for its sleek design and powerful engine, was a prized possession of Valentino's. After his death, the car became the focus of several strange occurrences and was rumored to be haunted. Subsequent owners of the car reported feeling an inexplicable chill while driving it and hearing ghostly whispers. Some even claimed to see Valentino's apparition in the rearview mirror. The car changed hands multiple times, with each new owner experiencing a series of misfortunes. The haunted reputation of Valentino's Isotta Fraschini has made it a subject of fascination for car enthusiasts and paranormal investigators alike. Valentino's Isotta Fraschini, a symbol of his immense success, became central to a chilling urban legend. It is said that the car is haunted by the spirit of Valentino himself. According to tales, strange occurrences have been reported by subsequent owners and those who come into contact with the car. These include unexplained mechanical failures, eerie sounds, and a spectral presence felt within the vehicle. Valentino died at the age of 31. Soon after, the car passed into the hands of a Hollywood producer named Columbo. After Valentino's sudden death in 1926, the car was purchased by his friend and fellow actor Russ Columbo. Columbo, a rising star in Hollywood, was killed in a bizarre and tragic accident involving an antique gun, which further cemented the car's ominous reputation. Following Columbo's death, the car was acquired by a famed screenwriter and producer, William Randolph Hearst. However, he quickly sold the car after learning of its dark history. The car then found its way into the hands of James Dole, the pineapple magnate, who met an untimely end in a plane crash shortly after buying the vehicle. Another owner, actress Diana Barrymore, reportedly experienced a string of personal misfortunes, including the collapse of her career and her tragic death, which some attributed to the car's malevolent influence. The curse seemed to continue with Tom Mix, the famous Western star, who borrowed the car. He died in a car accident shortly after, although it wasn't in Valentino's vehicle at the time. The connection was still made. Even more bizarrely, a wealthy socialite named Margaret Gorman reportedly became obsessed with the car after acquiring it leading to a series of unfortunate events, including financial ruin and her own tragic demise. The haunting is believed to stem from Valentino's deep attachment to the car, which represented his status and success. The Asota Fraschini was not just a means of transportation, but a testament to Valentino's glamorous lifestyle and his ability to capture the hearts of millions. Whether the stories are a product of overactive imaginations or a genuine paranormal phenomenon, the haunting of Valentino's Isotta Fraschini Tipo 8A adds a spectral layer to the car's already rich history, cementing its place in both automotive and Hollywood lore. The car, after passing through several owners, eventually became a collector's item, and it has reportedly been displayed at various car shows and museums. Due to its historical significance and the legends associated with it, the Isotta Fraschini remains a subject of fascination. However, no new incidents or tragedies have Diana Barrymore had a strange death that should also be mentioned. She was found dead in bed, at 38 years old. Officials stated she died from a drug overdose, but the coroner who performed her autopsy didn't find a lethal amount of substances in her body. He couldn't even find a cause of death. Valentino's connection to Paramount Studios, where he filmed many of his movies, has also given rise to ghostly tales. Studio 5, in particular, is said to be haunted by Valentino's spirit. Employees and visitors have reported hearing unexplained footsteps, disembodied voices, and even catching glimpses of a figure that resembles the star. These paranormal activities often occur during late-night shoots or in the early hours of the morning, when the studio is quiet. Some believe that Valentino's ghost returns to the place where he spent so much of his life, reliving the moments that made him a legend. I'm not afraid of the dead or of ghosts. I'm not afraid of anything pertaining to the life beyond. And it's not because I don't believe in it, it's because I do. 
Valentino's ghost has reportedly been seen at several locations in Los Angeles. The Hollywood Roosevelt Hotel is one such site. According to legend, Valentino's spirit haunts room 928, where he is said to have stayed during his lifetime. Guests and staff have reported seeing a figure resembling Valentino, as well as experiencing unexplained cold spots and eerie sensations. Another haunted location is Valentino's final resting place, Hollywood Forever Cemetery. Visitors have reported seeing a shadowy figure near Valentino's crypt, often described as a man in old-fashioned clothing. Some have even claimed to hear faint whispers and feel a sudden drop in temperature when approaching the crypt. Valentino was known for his prowess on the dance floor, particularly his skill in performing the tango. According to legend, his ghost continues to dance in the ballroom of the Knickerbocker Hotel in Hollywood, where he often stayed. Witnesses have reported seeing a shadowy figure resembling Valentino gliding across the dance floor, moving gracefully to music only he can hear. Some guests have also claimed to feel an unseen presence leading them in a dance, with the temperature dropping noticeably as they move. The ghostly tango at the Knickerbocker Hotel adds to the lore of Valentino's restless spirit. Another lesser-known legend is that of the ghostly guardian, believed to be Valentino himself, who is said to protect women in distress. Several women have reported encountering a charming, ghostly figure who helps them in times of need, guiding them to safety. These stories describe Valentino's ghost as gallant and protective, reflecting his screen persona as a romantic hero. Rudolph Valentino's legacy is not only defined by his contributions to cinema, but also by the rich tapestry of legends and lore that surround him. From the haunted falcon lair and the cursed ring of destiny, to ghostly apparitions and modern-day encounters, the paranormal aspects of Valentino's story add a fascinating, if eerie, dimension to his enduring fame. These tales continue to captivate and mystify, ensuring that Valentino's presence remains felt in the world of the living, long after his physical form has departed. Whether fact or fiction, the paranormal legend of Rudolph Valentino is a testament to the enduring power of Hollywood's golden age and the enigmatic allure of one of its most iconic stars.
Thanks for watching. Be sure to like, subscribe, comment, and share to keep fascinating content coming here at Nightmare Nexus.